Let's talk Georgia recruiting. A big name prospect started trending in the dog's direction today. And I got Rusty Manzel on to talk about these latest developments. Also, Georgia is back in Athens this weekend. They face Auburn. Big recruiting weekend on deck. We're going to break it all down. But first, UGA fans, do me a favor. Hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. We're talking UGA recruiting all season long. So jump on board right now. Hit subscribe for me, please. All right. Let's bring on Rusty Mansell, Dogs HQ. And we're going to start with Uzmain Chroma, the running back. Uh, he started trending in George's direction, the great Chad Simmons put a pick in. A couple of others are rolling in. So as we're two or three days away, we know Florida State's involved. We know Tennessee, Auburn. Uh, but what are you hearing about the dogs right now? Listen, he came up for Tennessee Tech weekend and, uh, you know, spent some time with Kirby Smart. It was one of those visits where it's not, uh, you know, the the big game, Tennessee Tech, is sort of speak. But coming up and spending some time with Kirby Smart on a game day, I was told Kirby Smart spent about 45 minutes with him and kind of reiterated, listen, you know, you're a major target for us. Running back uh, coach Josh Crawford is a former Lee County High School assistant coach who's now the running back coach at Georgia. A couple of stops later, a lot of connection there for Chroma. And, uh, you know, what I've written on Dogs HQ last couple of weeks, I felt like Georgia was trending there. Mm -hmm. And uh, today as well, I, 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 you know, I don't do the prediction type thing. I try to give you the pulse of where I'm at right now. Right. And as we video this, I, I feel like Georgia's in a good spot going into this decision this weekend. Yeah, so take me behind the scenes because we've had Steve Wiltfong on this mm -hmm. channel a lot. Kind of talk yeah. about Chroma's recruitment in terms of these are the teams, but if Georgia presses the gas on this recruitment, mm -hmm. they're going to land them. So what kind of change was it that meeting was that kind of the yep. turning point with Kirby mm -hmm. where they said, Hey, you are mm -hmm. our, you know, we want you. And mm -hmm. since then have the dogs just picked up traction, Georgia and Auburn fans in Athens this weekend, listen up, whether you're cheering on the tigers or the dogs on October five, plan on a pit stop at the Whataburger food truck during your tailgate, get ready to watch your team by securing an easy dub first with a hot, fresh Whataburger that is. And no matter who comes out on top, when you take your team to Whataburger, you know you're going to feel like a winner by getting your food made the way you want it, fresh and hot every time, 24-7. I love the burgers, but I got to be honest, I'm more of a breakfast Whataburger guy. You bring me in there at 2 a.m., I'm either getting a taquito, bacon, potato, but I'm definitely getting a breakfast on a bun. I call it a bob. You can call it whatever you want. It'll get you right. Anyway, let me know. Are you guys more breakfast or burgers at Whataburger? Comment section below. I will see you at the game and see you at Whataburger. Josh, you've been doing it as long as I have. My experience, when you meet with someone for like 45 minutes on a game day, there's questions on both sides. And I would imagine Chroma got those questions answered. Feels good about it. Obviously, the connection with Josh Crawford, now that's big. He's got Lee County connections, and this thing's went a lot of different ways, man. You know, at one point, I thought he was going to Florida State, and then probably a month, month and a half ago, I thought he was leaning toward Auburn. In fact, you know, Steve Wilfong and Chad Simmons, who are two of the, the two best in the business, made predictions on own three that he was going to go to Auburn. But I kind of felt like Georgia was still in this thing, and when that meeting took place uh, a couple of Saturdays ago, I felt like since then, Everything I've heard behind the scenes is that this young man is going to end up at Georgia, and that's kind of where I am as of today going into that decision on Saturday. I think this guy's going to join the 2025 class at Georgia. And here's what I love about him, man. Everybody he plays, I talk to those guys, and they're like, Rusty, this guy in the fourth quarter is as good as anybody we've ever faced. It's a 215, 220-pound yeah. back that can run, and uh, this will be a big get for Georgia. Yeah, he's a different size back than what yeah. Georgia currently has, so he's a good fit. All right. In the next chapter of Georgia leaving no stone unturned, you know, remember they were recruiting those uh, Rutgers guys that they liked a whole lot. Now there's a Boston College defensive line commit named Josiah mm -hmm. Victory. It, mm -hmm. it seems like he's rising up UGA's board. Is mm -hmm. he in a similar spot? Because we've talked about Joseph Abachu mm -hmm. as well. Is uh, Josiah Victory in kind of a similar spot? You look at him, and I'll give you another name you just mentioned about talking about Rutgers, Braxton Kyle, young man in North right. Gwinnett, expecting him on campus this weekend. Okay. That's a defensive lineman that George is recruiting. I, this is what I think, Josh. The in-state kids are becoming so much more valuable, I think, to Georgia because these young men are, you know, you kind of want to go to Georgia. You want the opportunity to go to Georgia. You know, maybe the thought process is these kids come here, they're going to take their time to develop. 
And, yeah. and, and I think people write off seniors too much. You can play yourself into a chart, a recruiting chart, and you can play yourself up a recruiting chart. And I think both of those young men at Grayson uh, have done that. And I think when Georgia worked them out this summer, Georgia got a chance to see them. And they have followed up not only an impressive spring and summer, they've had a great fall for Grayson. And when you start talking about in-state defensive linemen, they become that much more of a priority. Speaking of in-state defensive linemen, let's play a little hypothetical. Let's say mm -hmm. Georgia lands Justice Terry and Elijah Griffin, just mm -hmm. hypothetically, just walking yep. through here. How many more defensive linemen do you think Georgia can take after that? Well, there's a lot of questions. We could get real deep here because I don't know if Georgia's going to be at 105 scholarship. Are they going to do away with walk-ons? Does that mean Georgia's going to add 20 more players? The answer is not there yet on that. I've called yeah, everyone. You, that You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you start talking about this thing is going to be 105 and Georgia could potentially have 20 more spots, I guarantee you Kirby Smart's going to take more defensive linemen. I mean, there's no question. Those are the guys that separate you in the SEC. So you think that those spots, some of those spots are going to be uh, defensive linemen if they can, if Georgia can land those guys. So if they hypothetically land um, Elijah Griffith and Justice Terry, I still think they would take one more, even with Shivers and the young man from California. I don't want to butcher his name. Uh, the young man from Germany is out in, in, in uh, California is verbally committed as well. And you got uh, Stefan Shivers, young man out of uh, Middle Tennessee, committed to them. So that would put Georgia at four. If they get those four in the boat, I certainly see Georgia taking a minimum, a minimum of five. But okay. very quick, very quickly, Josh, this thing could get about six or seven if that rule, in fact, does uh, move forward. Yeah. All right. So there is some room for uh... – or even a couple more after Terry Griffin. That's interesting. All right. So this weekend, Georgia mm -hmm. returns home to Athens, only their second home game of the season. Mm -hmm. It's early, but how's the visit list shaping up for this Auburn game? Yeah, you look and uh, obviously people want to know about 2025s. And Justice Terry, we've confirmed he's going to be there. There's also uh, Steve Wolfong and Chad Simmons both confirmed Jackson Cantwell, the five-star uh, offensive lineman in the 2026 class, a pair of top tight ends and Caden Prothrow and Xavier Tiller out of Langston Hughes. Caden Prothrow, 6'6 kid out of Bowden. Uh, as we move forward into these 2026s and they become what I call front page news, you're going to know about right. these guys. And uh, Jared Curtis, who many think is the number mm -hmm. one quarterback in the country from 2026, he's verbally committed to Georgia. He'll be on campus. So a lot of 2026s, which are big deals, because most of the hay is in the barn on the 25 class. There'll be some guys there that, you know, the Braxton Kyle's uncommitted, uh, you know, and Bachu, you, you'll see if those guys show up this weekend, which I'm anticipating, but Justice Terry will probably be the headliner. Obviously, the name you get the text on, and Josh, you'll probably get the same text. Is C.J. Wiley going to be in Athens this weekend, the Florida State commit out of Milton High School, who Georgia stays in contact with? I've said that. But the next thing with C.J. Wiley is going to be follow the visits. Does he show up in one of these next two weekends in Athens with Auburn and Mississippi State games? That's what you're going to watch this weekend. And we may not know until he's either in those stands or he's not in those stands. Yeah, Florida State putting up a fight. He was back in Tallahassee last weekend, so we'll see what happens here. Uh, yeah. But this weekend, it's all about Uzma and Chroma making that decision on yeah. Saturday. Will it be Auburn? Will it be Georgia? You guys, let us know. Comment section below. Big visit weekend ahead. Go check out Dogs HQ. Thank you, Rusty, for joining the Inside Scoop. <laughs> Appreciate it, Josh.